And it's at the Twisted Ones. Okay, the Twisted Ones certainly do seem to live up to their name. The Twisted Animatronics are these horribly disfigured creatures that get no love from their mothers like an ugly duckling. The thing is though, they these don't grow into swans. <laughs> Instead, they use another bit of tech that I'll talk about later to disguise themselves. They also dig deep into the ground and then wait until the middle of the night to crawl out and take kids who wander away from their mommies. It, it legit sounds like an urban legend that parents would tell their kids to make sure that they come home before dark. I mean, I don't really know what else to say. That's definitely far more terrifying than a springlock failure. At least, like, you choose if you are in a springlock suit or not. But with this, it's just, it's just like a luck of the draw kind of thing. And I've only been to a casino once. I walked out $30 richer. In at nine, Lonely Freddy. Lonely Freddy already, in a way, kind of has like a parallel in our world. Uh, kind of. It's like it's like the trope where someone like becomes your friend and then starts slowly morphing into you and then tries to take over your life. I don't know. That's a thing, right? Have people talked about that? Maybe it's just a movies, or maybe I dreamt about it ages ago. I can't really remember, because, um, you know, my memory's great. But also, just plain old identity theft is, is is a thing in the real world, and that's basically what Lonely Freddy is. Lonely Freddies were introduced in the Fast Bear Frights books and are basically meant to, like, explain what psychic friend Fredbear was, or maybe are possibly supposed to be a way of what it could be. Uh, but basically, it's a robot that steals your body then traps your consciousness in its body. Yeah, what the ever-loving why? Why is this so terrifying? It's worse than a springlock failure, at least when you're a springlock victim, you're dead. Unless you've been possessed prior to getting springlock, but it, with this, you're you're stuck in a robot, watching your body walk away, smiling at you with color-changing eyes. It's messed up, dude. I don't like it. Yeah, it, it would not be fun, and it, it would be vicious, and god. <laughs> This far worse, all right? Far worse. And we're only at nine. And it ain't moon drop. Okay, there were plenty of times that Gregory should have been caught in security breach, particularly when Freddy gets grabbed by the moon drop animatronic right outside of parts and service. You're telling me that that moon drop, the daycare attendant, told Vanessa that Freddy was in parts and service, but then also didn't mention that we had been in the recharge station that was right next to it walking with Freddy. Because, like, he knew. He knew we were there. He waved at us while we were taking Freddy away. So like, then she's talking to Freddy as if she doesn't know that him and I have been working together. She's like, oh yeah, I, your name was coming from the Faz Watch. He's like, oh, that's all Faz Watches. But like, you were literally seen with me. <laughs> sure, the daycare attendant isn't able to get us if we're in the recharge station and we had left before she got there, but we clearly aren't invisible to the attendant and we also are, we, we've been there. Okay, why does none of this come up? And if it is supposed to come up, why why doesn't she just like straight up say, I know you're working with the kid, where the hell is he? No, she's like, oh, are you? Like, dude, come on. What makes this concerning about the daycare attendant's moon drop specifically, all right, is that he is such a damn creeper, okay? He is so freaking weird, he's like, if you know that guy who always hangs around your school, it's, it's that guy, all right? It, it's... Herbert, the moon drop daycare attendant. Basically, yeah, uh, yeah, oh god. Number seven, The Amazing Escape. William Afton in the books is much more lucky or perhaps just more brilliant than his video game counterpart. At least when it comes to dodging spring locks, somehow. Like in the games, he ends up getting spring locked, but instead of being killed by this experience, he miraculously survives, seeming to somehow pull a Harry Houdini and just escape that. While Charlie activates the spring locks in the suit he's wearing at the end of the novel Five Nights at Freddy's The Silver Eyes, we learn in the next book, The Twisted Ones, that the blood found in the scene ends up being analyzed in a lab and found to be fake blood. Finally, in the fourth closet, it is confirmed that William Afton, while harmed, miraculously survived being spring locked. I don't know how this is possible, but it's a thing that happened. Pretty impressive considering in most other cases, it's pretty much a death sentence. Number six, triggered by wriggling off mini arenas. This is probably my favorite consequence when it comes to the spring locks malfunctioning. Likely because you yourself actually get to experience failure in a way. But obviously not in real life because that would be awful and horrible and extremely painful. Instead, you experience it in game. So although you can't feel it, you can't imagine what it would feel like, which honestly is also terrifying to do. This time when the spring locks fail, it is as a result of your movement. You are the one who must wriggle to shake off the mini arenas, which 
which are climbing up the suit and attempting to kind of climb into it with you. If this happens enough times, the mini Rena's jump scare will get triggered, implying your death by mini Rena's. However, if you also wriggle too much to keep them off you without winding the spring locks back up enough, you will trigger the spring locks release, which will also result in your death by being impaled by suit parts, which are released by those spring locks. Yikes. Number 5. The Fate of Shadow Freddy Shadow Freddy is thought by some in regards to lore to have been a possible springlock victim. The consequences of this employee's springlock failure would be, of course, that they died. That's right, people believe that Shadow Freddy, who appears to be somewhat ghostly in nature, is actually the spirit of a former Freddy's employee, who died while wearing a springlock Freddy suit. It's believed that for one reason or another, the suit malfunctioned, murdering its wearer. As a result, Shadow Freddy was born to haunt its former workplace and was also likely one of the reasons that spring lock suits stopped being used, at least temporarily. Although apparently not soon enough as there were other failures that occurred possibly even after this one. Number 4. The Fate of RWQFSFASXC Some believe that not only is Shadow Freddy a victim of the spring locks failing, but so is the shadowy figure of RWQFSFASXC. They believe that this shadowy Bonnie was another employee who instead of being killed by the spring lock Freddy suit, met their end while inside the spring lock Bonnie suit. which also also failed. My question is if these employees happen to both die as a result of wearing and using the spring lock suits and the suits malfunctioning, did they die on the same day? Because if not, why would you ever continue to use these suits as a company? And why would you ever, as an employee, agree to get in another one? Unless one of them was hired after the other one and like no one told them about what happened to the last person to put on one of those suits? Still, Legal liability right there. Like, my alarms are going off for like lawsuits. Of course, this was only a theory anyways, and actually one that Scott claimed was incorrect. In regards to the true origins of both Shadow Freddy and RWQFSFASXC. In at three reality altering discs. Alright. I, I, I mentioned it earlier, I'm gonna, I'm, now I'm actually gonna talk about it because I mention these every chance I get because these things are absolutely astounding. If you didn't already know, in the original FNAF novel trilogy it was revealed that the twisted animatronics used discs that changed how others saw them. Basically creating an illusionary appearance using sound emitted from that disc that messed with your brain waves, kind of made it like an eye of the beholder situation I think is how it was explained. However, the mere existence of these discs puts everything we know about the series into question, okay? Like, how do we know if anything we see is ever real. If FNAF 1 had us hallucinate Golden Freddy and all the It's Me stuff, alright? What if that wasn't us being possessed by our little brother, but maybe that was just the discs messing with our brain? I don't know, okay? What if, like, the actual pizza plex or the pizza place from the first game had been changed by the discs? What if we're just running on a treadmill, kind of like, like, a Ready Player One style, and we just have these discs that are changing how we see the world so that we're just really standing still when we're playing through Security Breach. I don't know, okay? Do the animatronics look more rotten than they do normally? I don't know. It, the, the sheer existence of these things is absolutely horrifying and far worse than actually a spring lock failure because at least a spring lock failure, I know if it's real because I'd be dead. That's as plain as it gets. But ultimately, in a number two, human robots. Again, something I'm sure that people might not think is worse, uh, but hey, the fact that there are robots that are actually able to look and bleed and our passable humans is terrifying, okay? That is a horrifying thing. In the original FNAF novel trilogy, it's revealed that Charlotte, the main protagonist of the books, is in fact one in a series of robots meant to allow her to grow up properly after being killed at an early age. But not only is she a robot, her adult version is also the baby animatronic. Yeah, <laughs> so Charlotte's robot was also able to look like baby, thanks to the pins on her body, but also able to look like a human that bleeds. Yep, that's terrifying though. That implication is just, wh who in their right mind would think of that concept, okay? And like, if it was, dude, that's like the fembots from Austin, that's, it's fembots from Austin Powers in the FNAF universe, okay? That's horrible. <laughs> that's terrifying. That's far worse than a giant yellow rabbit that might kill me, okay? No way. N no. G please. If you, if you don't understand why that's terrifying, please explain to me why you don't think it's worse in the comments. And if you don't agree with it, like one of these, explain why spring lock failures are worse in the comments because this, come on. <laughs> 
Finally, in a number one, no choice. Maybe he might have had issues killing Afton for whatever reason, despite him literally killing his daughter, but he's fine offing his son when he gets the chance. That's right, Henry Emily. In both fires set by Henry that we see, FNAF 3 and FNAF 6, uh, Michael was there both times, and he didn't care that Michael was in the building. And he actually doesn't give Michael the opportunity to leave in FNAF 6, despite there actually being a way out planned. Yeah, he literally says in his final speech, who somehow found this job listing not intended for you, although there was a way out planned, I have a feeling that's not what you want. I'm sorry, you have a feeling? Bro, come on, I'm not a musician, stop it. He, he assumes that we also want to die for whatever reason, and he doesn't actually give us the chance to make that decision for ourselves and just forces us to do it since he doesn't give us a way out. Like, sorry dude, okay, but that's murder. Whether we wanted it or not, it's murder. Come on. <laughs> like, that's horrible. Michael wasn't given the choice. Like, I get that he's the son of the man who killed your daughter, and clearly he, he isn't looking too hot, but at least, like, he seems to be trying to help. So yeah, uh, while it would suck to have my bones replaced with metal while I'm fully functioning and conscious. And it's seven required. The spring lock suits themselves are an occupational hazard that they didn't really need to create. Like these things are hella deadly and both William and Henry allow for their employees to wear them. Like, goddamn, okay? Just, like, just make a separate suit for the animatronic characters. For, like, for the employees, okay? Like, the people who run your business. You know, they are the ones who make you the money, so, you know, they don't end up dying from robotic parts replacing their internal organs. OSHA would have been all over these goddamn suits if it was real in this universe, but apparently I guess it's not. Uh, and honestly, it's probably required by your contract to wear these suits at work. And if you refuse, you're probably gonna get fired, especially considering how they started getting ready to fire Jeremy because he saw a glitch trap in Help Wanted. So why wouldn't they fire you for not wearing your suit if it's in your contract? Even if you claim it was to protect your life, they'd find another reason that you couldn't really fight against, so. Especially, you know, when a serial killer is the CEO. And it's six implications. Now, while the term spring lock is used in real life, it's totally different from the actual FNAF mechanism. I'm certain most of you got the whole spring locks are real line from spring locks and you, how not to die remastered. It's a thread on the FNAF wiki. However, actual spring locks are just locks that use springs, okay? From my research, what I gathered is that a spring lock in real life is, in simplest terms, a spring lock. It's like if your front door's deadbolt was on a spring. Every other instance talking about real spring locks or just ends up bringing you back or quotes this page. So it's kind of circular logic, okay? You can't use evidence within the thing that you're trying to prove as proof that it is real. It's like plugging a power bar into itself. It doesn't work. You can't use the same article to prove that spring locks are real, okay? Because they're not. <laughs> At least their game form isn't. But if the spring lock failure was real, I think the implications of like all of this being real in general is like one of the worst things. You get it? Like, it, it's definitely in the top 10. Get it? It's a little meta content joke for you because this is a top 10 list. It's in the top 10. Halfway through into number five, comments. I've mentioned this in previous videos, mostly to explain why there won't ever be an actual, real FNAF restaurant that you'll be able to walk into, and it still remains true since we're only getting a virtual diner that you can only order online. However, I think that one of the worst things still, and especially when it comes to these suits, is the goddamn comments about them. You wanna know a comment that I saw yesterday? Well, yesterday for me as I was writing this, Wednesday for you. Okay, I just I saw someone say that they want to be springlocked. What? Why? Why would you want to be springlocked? Do you know how messed up that is? You're saying that you want to be killed by this thing? Cuz there there's some hotlines that you should call. Like why on sweet heaven's earth would you want to be springlocked? Do you know how absolutely agonizingly painful that would be? That would be one of the worst things imaginable, okay? Holy sweet lord baby Jesus W Christ. That would be one of the worst ways to go, if not the worst way. Uh, at least like as far as like actually could happen goes, I think at least, okay? Cuz like a volcano would suck, but it's a bit unrealistic. It it's a bad idea, okay? Stop doing this. Stop saying this. Okay, talk to a doctor. And in 4 Afton, I talked about how the implications would apply to like how everything in FNAF would have happened in real life if one of these was real, but one of the worst implications would be that Afton was real. This man has caused me enough pain and suffering already. I don't need him to be like an actual person, especially considering how Springtrap would be set loose next year. 
and then everything after it would happen. This channel would probably be a true crime channel and not a gaming channel. I'd probably have tried proving it myself and maybe even become a PI so that I can do so. But straight up, this man has already caused me enough grief and suffering and, and loss and tears of, of pain at night in my life and it's made me lose enough of it already to him so yeah him being real would just be the worst thing that I can imagine for me uh, however that's only if the spring lock failure thing was also real there are worse things for people in the FNAF universe though um, not in real life such as in at three in at three Henry Emily I get that spring lock failures suck but even the good guys in this series are kind of trash FNAF 6 was supposed to be the end of the Afton story that's what Henry set out to do in that game make sure that nobody remembered what what happened there despite the parents of the victims remembering and the various other news sources covering it. However, the dumbass figured that the first fire didn't work so a second one is definitely going to. Uh, and the fact that he was so confident in this plan for whatever reason that he actually let himself die in the process to make sure that nobody remembered what happened um, is dumb. Like I said, dude, even if Henry and William and his kids are dead, the parents of the victims still know. And as we learned in Security Breach, there are other parents who remember too, citing the missing children from the Pizzaplex as happening again, which means they know it happened before. Maybe if Henry had some balls, William wouldn't have been able to possess Vanny and come back yet again to wreak even more havoc, or I don't know, maybe everything would have been fine. Uh, the Pizzaplex missing children are a direct result of Henry being worse than a spring Springlock failure, and you can't tell me any different. Springlock failures have only resulted in one canonical death in the series, or death, but Henry has resulted in a lot more. But ultimately, in number two, being in Afton. Okay, look, Springlock failures are horrible. Okay, yes, and yes, William is a horrible person, but being just an Afton in this universe must be the worst thing ever. It's like the worst spawn point in existence, because every Afton has been subjected to a horrible fate. It's like if Sean Bean is cast to play a character, you know that they're going to die. It's that, but if you're an Afton, you're going to suffer a horrible fate. Okay, let's go through the list, shall we? Here we go. William, springlocked, possessed, forced to suffer for like 60 years at least. Charlotte grabbed by baby, going on to possess the animatronic, then joins a group of other animatronics that crawl inside of her big brother to escape an underground facility, and then gets kicked out of the greater collective, and then goes on to try to impress her father that caused her death in the first place by creating the robot that killed her. Talk about daddy issues. Then we have Crying Child, who we don't even know this kid's name. He watched his sister get crushed, he got crushed by a robot, and then he goes on to possess his brother and makes him suffer before realizing that it's not his fault. Then, speaking of the brother Michael, he blamed himself for killing his brother. He then spent his whole life trying to undo his father's horrible acts, and he himself was scooped in stuff full of robot parts, including his sister, which is, again, a whole other issue. He was made into a purple, bruised man that everyone was scared of, and he was finally burnt to death in FNAF 6 by Henry without even being given the option to survive. So yeah, being in Afton is cursed. And that's not even talking about how Gregory or Vanessa could be Aftons. And finally, in at number one, the lore! Oh, the worst thing about FNAF is the lore. Yeah, having to try to figure it out or even think about it or try to give it any coherent links is probably the most horrific thing that you can try to attempt in regards to the series, yes, but also literally at all. Do not try this, please. I get messages on Instagram saying like, oh, I have a FNAF theory and I was hoping we could talk about it like I, I appreciate that you want to talk to me about it as opposed to like Matt Pat or someone famous maybe because I'm more likely to reply because I'm not famous but like the best advice that I can give to you is if you value any shred of your sanity do not try this do not attempt to put any shred of logic into FNAF it will break you hey do you think that I wanted to do this do you think that I planned on doing this for two years no I read one comment that said I see a FNAF in the thumbnail and I click and it drove me so far into the madness that I'm basically the Joker of the FNAF community. People don't like me because I made a joke video about the worst FNAF fan games that included games that people loved and now it's on the goddamn YouTuber wiki as a controversy. People get mad at you for misgendering fictional robots. 
They're robots and not real. People were furious with the Pop Goes creator because of that, and I'm like, what? What, dude? Just don't do it, okay? I'm not gatekeeping. I am. I'm genuinely trying to help you. I want you to be okay. So please save yourself from the toxicity and let my heart and soul be the one to suffer all of this torture. And I will keep doing so. Number ten: William Afton and the leak. Probably one of the most iconic when it comes to Springlock failures is William Afton. William Afton from the games that is. In this version of the story, William Afton basically got destroyed by these Springlocks. He was fully impaled by the Springlocks in the Springlock Bonnie suit after trying to escape the ghosts of his victims. He thought hiding inside the Spring Bonnie suit would protect him, but hey, he was wrong. It turned out that there was water on the floor, which when he touched, caused the spring locks in the suit to loosen, or you know, water that possibly dripped down from him, and also his breath. This caused the spring locks to malfunction, they fully released, and impaled William, ultimately causing his death. However, this is William Afton, so even dying would not keep him dead forever. It only keep him dead for a little while. We later learned that one of the vengeful spirits, or possibly a pair of them, cursed William to experience the pain that they had felt, thereby extending his life indefinitely, no matter the pain he suffered. Which is how William Afton can be a shambling corpse, but also somehow still alive. And friends, before I move on to this next spot on the list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Gaming, and if you love FNAF 2, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 9, Bite of 87. Well, we don't really know for sure if this is correct, as the Bite of 87 is still not fully confirmed in terms of all the details, it is possible that it was the result of a spring lock failure. It's believed that the bite of 87 led to the fatal injury of a guest when the frontal lobe of their brain was badly damaged in an incident related to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Now, based on the bite of 83, we can imagine it may have been a similar incident where someone basically stuck their head inside an animatronic and kind of had it chomped. Or it could have been something else that happened. But either way, if it was similar to the bite of 83, or even if it wasn't, it seems likely that a spring lock failure could be possible as the suits may have still been in use at that time. As the suits may still have been in use at the time that this terrible incident occurred. Now, some might say they stopped being used after the bite of 83, but with a timeline this wonky, I don't think we have anything that is 100% concrete, conclusive yet in regards to when spring lock suits stop being used across the board. Forever. Also, I feel like there are times maybe where they were like, ah, let's stop using them for like a bit, and then. Ah, uh, we think we fixed them and then they're still, you know, dysfunctional. Because that's just how springlock suits are. I would never even go near one of those things. Death trap. Number eight, can you springlock a ghost? To answer this question, we could turn to the Fazbear Frights book 135 AM and one of the stories within its pages, titled The New Kid. In this story, a young boy named Devin befriends the new kid at school, Kelsey. However, while his other friend Mick seems to really like Kelsey, and at first, Devin does too, eventually Devin becomes jealous of Kelsey. When Kelsey seemingly ditches them one day when they're all hanging out, Devin decides to get revenge on him for doing this. Finding a new hangout spot, a now abandoned former Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, Devin dares Kelsey to put on a spring lock suit. Kelsey does this and begins dancing around, but doing so, of course, triggers the spring locks within the suit to release, seemingly impaling him. While initially Devin and Mick leave Kelsey there for dead, Devin eventually returns to investigate. Devin eventually returns to investigate, with Mick wondering if Kelsey might still be alive. When Devin does return, he doesn't see Kelsey in the suit, but later spots a black haired ghostly figure within. It is implied that Kelsey is some kind of spirit of vengeance, possibly one of the spirits from the game lord that possessed Golden Freddy. And if you're wondering how we know that, well, later in the book we see that Kelsey is alive and well, seemingly after he seemed to have been springlocked, so either he he has superpowers or he a ghost. In its seven WWWAD. Ah, yes. What would William Afton do? Because honestly, being him would suck worse than a springlock failure. I mean, like, I rip on Elizabeth all the time for wanting to impress her father in FNAF 6 like I was just doing, but I'm right to, okay? This man is an absolute psycho and not even a smart one. I have made so many videos about how dumb William is. Like, what if William Afton was smart? Top 10 William Afton dumbest moments. William Afton luckiest moments and that last one was just me ripping on him again because somehow despite being this stupid and insane he managed to not get caught every single time I talk about how stupid he is 
I talk about how he could have done it better, which is why in various videos I will say hi to the jury because I know for a fact that if anything ever happens in this area, they are coming to me first because I know how to be a psycho. But still, come on, that's it. That's the number, okay? Being springlocked would suck, but William Afton sucks harder. Wait, no, 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 no. That that sounds like no, no, no. Wait, wait, no. Don't cut me off. I didn't mean in its six doors. You knew that this was going to be on the list, okay? If you've been on this channel at all, you know that I hate the goddamn mother-loving doors in this game. Why do they open when the power is out? That doesn't make sense, okay? If it's an electromagnet, like everyone keeps saying in the comments whenever I bring this up, those require power to turn on. So if anything, it would be cost them power to keep the doors open rather than keep them closed. Gravity does not work in reverse. If the magnet is off when the door is up, it would just fall down. I, I get that it's supposed to be for gameplay purposes, okay, but, but what in-universe thing makes this make sense? People say that it's a, like a safety issue, so like if there's a fire or whatever, you can leave, but that's what windows are for! <laughs> I am almost positive that there should be a window in that room, and if there's not, that's yet another OSHA violation that they need to address, okay? There's no conceivable way in any reality that the doors should work that way, but they do. They do, and it makes me mad. Like, why would you, why would you do this, okay, Scott? Why? Sky Daddy Scott, I'm bringing it back. Why? Some people, like I said, it's, say it's a fire safety thing, but like, no. The, if the building runs out of power, how could the doors open? Electromagnets use power to be on. So like, even if it is a fire thing, how are they keeping them up? I don't get it. <laughs> Also, if you made it through this far, subscribe. You clearly enjoy the video, um, or just me going insane. And there's plenty more of that on this channel, no matter which one you like, so you're welcome. How are we doing number five? Being a cop. Being a cop in the FNAF universe must be a horrible idea, because not only are you now a cop, but you're also a cop in the FNAF universe, which for the sake of this list is working at the uh, precinct that failed to capture William Afton, okay? So now the public ridicules you, they don't think you can actually do your job, and you probably got your budget cut so badly that you may be able to get one squad car, but that's it. One squad car for the whole station. Plus, now you gotta deal with multiple arson cases and the fact that Freddy's keeps coming back and more kids keep going missing. I don't know, there's a weird purple guy walking around that smells bad, but it's like also like a skin condition so you can't really say anything about it without absolutely destroying the slightest bit of reputation that you have left as an officer in this universe. Like, that's in essence what it's like to be a cop in FNAF. Okay, or what it would realistically be like because honestly these dudes didn't check inside the bleeding death smelling animatronics when kids went missing in that building So I, I, I get it. They're either ridiculed by the public or you just lose the majority of your IQ once you join up with them That's those are the only two explanations. It could be both as well And at 4 MCI the missing children's incident is definitely worse than a spring lock failure I mean the one failure that we know about that happened in the games only affected one person and a horrible person at that so I mean just by sheer numbers alone the missing children's incident is definitely worse but not even just that okay those parents must have been in a rough spot not only did they lose their kids but they also have to deal with the incompetence of the in-universe police and the whole plot requirement of Afton getting away with it to actually continue the series so yeah like I said there were literally animatronics leaking mucus and blood that people were comparing to human corpses and they weren't actually investigated. So, do you know how insanely infuriating that would be, okay? I'm surprised that Henry was the one to put Afton down and not someone else. Like, yeah, he got springlocked in 93, but that was seven years after the missing children's incident. Had I been one of those parents, I would not have cared about the prison sentence, okay? And I don't think that anyone would have really judged me for it. I think that they would have thanked me and posted my bail. I mean, I would have lost the trial, but still. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. No. Number three, payback. Going back to the Fazbear Fright story, the new kid from the 1.35 AM book, Kelsey wasn't the only one to get spring locked in the story. When Devin returns to the abandoned Freddy's to see if Kelsey might still be alive, he notices the suit is empty. He thinks he sees something further inside and so he decides to reach into the mouth of the suit, only for the suit to seemingly clamp down on his arm. Of course, you should never do that. If you see something and you're like, oh, maybe I'll put my arm in this thing where my arm could get stuck, don't 
don't do it. The more he struggles, the more he seems to get sucked into the suit. Sure, this isn't so much a spring lock failure from the inside, you know, and no one's wearing the suit in some of these. It's more reminiscent of the bite of 83 because I don't think there was anyone in that suit. But this is still a spring lock suit failing. So while different, I still consider it to be a failure with consequences. Consequences being, you know, Devin also likely died. And at 10, moisture sensitive. One of the things that I find to be the absolute dumbest thing about not only these damned suits, but also the FNAF series in general, is how stupid it is that the spring lock mechanisms inside the spring lock suits fail with moisture. Sure, it explains why William gets spring locked, because the room was dripping and whatever, the ceiling was leaking, and it makes everyone confused with crying child because he was crying. Despite that not being a spring lock failure, everyone thought it was because he was crying and, you know, moisture. But in actual practice, that is a horribly flawed mechanic. Like, if me breathing and sweating is going to make the metal bits snap on me, why would I do it in a hot robotic suit? That seems like a horrible and stupid idea. Like, Yes, okay, put me in a hot and sweaty environment that gets me killed if it gets wet. That's not a liability at all. I get sweaty wearing my freaking Doctor Strange costume, okay? Imagine a giant suit full of metal, okay? That would also be heavy as hell to walk around in too, only making the sweating worse. In a nine designer. You see, there are a decent amount of people that for some reason think that these spring lock suits were made with pure intentions by William Afton. <laughs> this kind of goes hand in hand with the idea that William started killing after losing his kids, but we know that that's not the case. Since thanks to the fast facts found in FNAF AR's files, we know that the fun time animatronics were some of the first ones ever made, and considering the abilities of Baby and her comrades, we know that they were made in order to kill. Meaning that even if the spring lock animatronics were the very first animatronics ever, it's reasonable to assume that they were also designed with death in mind, which explains multiple things. But honestly, if William made the fun times with death in mind, it's likely that he did the same with the spring locks. You get me? And and if you think that a suit that can snap at a moment's notice and shove pounds of metal, bars, cogs, gears, and chains, and more into the same space as your body would be made with pure intentions, you should stop watching these videos and go to a therapist. Seriously. I have a number. In at 8, no bonus. The spring lock mechanism is probably the most intuitive thing that FNAF's world invented. The ability to move robotic parts out of the way enough for a human to fit inside is nuts. And while it may be dangerous, we also drive over 100 kilometers or miles or whatever per hour in huge metal death boxes, so we can't necessarily complain about it. Um, and while yes, they have their faults, there is nothing compared to the ability to be both animatronic and suit. That's an incredible feat of technology, and I'm, I'm sure they play into it with the marketing. Like, I mean, we hear the phone guy tapes from FNAF 3 talking about these things, okay? And he never mentions a bonus or anything like that for you risking your life with one of these damn suits. And even if you end up getting spring locked, there doesn't really seem to be any compensation package for your loved ones. Hell, if you die, you may not even get your severance. Eh, actually, maybe that's why they do it. Your family can file a lawsuit since, you know, you died on the job, but that's a lengthy court battle against a massive company with a serial killer who has yet to be caught at the front lines. It's not really gonna do much good for your fan. Uh, so the fact that you don't get a bonus if you get in one of these suits, let alone get spring locked, no thanks. It's a red flag. Swipe left. And it's six, Michael as a sitter. <laughs> okay, now, Paul, you don't really know the details about what's going on inside the Midnight Motors minigame from FNAF 6. I still think it's safe to say that this is the Afton family, and particularly the Afton males. Seemingly, Michael was babysitting Crying Child while their father was, um, at work, but Michael was just watching TV, and he wasn't watching his little brother, which allowed his little bro to lock himself in his room, break his window, and then go to the pizza place again, which I'm sure made his dad so angry agree that when he got back his his son wasn't he wasn't the nice father that he pretends to be I'm sure so yeah Michael's negligence ends up getting his little brother in a lot of trouble and God knows what else all because he wanted to watch a, a show a, a drama about a vampire and his baby mama. Cause you know, Immortal and the Restless. Cause yeah, it's worse cause it's a freaking soap opera. Dude, come on, watch something cool like Super Pets. I don't know, I just said the first thing that came to mind that was stupid but also still better than a soap opera. It didn't have Bat Cow, all right? No matter what, it's still stupid, okay? William, you tell William to go easy on Crying Child but that's definitely not going to happen, all right? Come on, 
it's like, it's the same gray shirt. It's definitely Michael. So that's about as clear cut as the series gets. Um, so yeah, hiring Michael to look after your kid is probably worse than uh, dealing with a spring lock failure, especially when it's your other kid. And then, you know, you gotta... Also, by the way, subscribe because you're halfway there. And uh, if you get Michael as a babysitter, you'll have to be living on a prayer. Okay, terrible pun aside. I apologize, but please subscribe anyway. Halfway through into number five, not trying. Michael Afton's biggest sin in my mind, uh, ignoring the whole negligence thing, is just the fact that he did nothing. Like, sure, he he's like, he's pretty Pretending to be the good guy. Yeah, I'm going after my dad, but but really Michael just seems like he's playing the hero this whole time and not really doing anything. He he he's like trying to right his father's wrongs. He says that he's going to come find him. But but looking at him and looking at what he does, he's not doing it because he's a good person. He's doing it because he feels bad and because of like he's trying to clear his own conscience. He blames himself for getting his brother killed, which subsequently means that anything he does in an effort to make himself feel better about what happened is just that. It's nothing else. Because, like, in the end, nothing will really bring his little brother back. And, like, he doesn't actually have the 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 chops to stop his dad. He doesn't. He, he says he's going to come find him, but then when he does find him in FNAF 6, he's not the one to burn the place to the ground to stop him. That's Henry. Henry is the only one willing to actually stop William. And it just shows how not serious Michael is about this whole thing. If he really wanted to make sure that William had been stopped, he wouldn't have let himself burn as well, okay? Because, like, it, it, that's just so he doesn't feel guilty. And I'm sure that he'd rather have a springlock failure, too. Like, if he had the choice between doing what he does in the series or getting springlocked, I bet my ass that he'd have chosen getting springlocked. And for canon ending, during the true ending of Security Breach in the Afton or Burn Trap or canon or whatever ending you want to call it, everything we experience is just... There's no way that this lined up because even like by protagonist standards, that's insane. We have to fend off Burn Trap's attempts to take control over Freddy by setting him on fire using what are most likely the mechanisms that Henry used to set the building on fire in FNAF 6. Um, but that's incredibly thoughtful of the ground to not only give out at, at the perfect moments that we fall into the room we need to be in, but also to form the sinkhole so perfectly that all of the monitors that were set up to the cameras and the and the vent systems with the fire all still work, okay? These monitors are set up like on tables with buttons that light the fires in the room that the monitor corresponds to. Plus, I mean like come on. Again, how are these still working? It's been a long time. These cameras are old as hell. The computers are still somehow working despite being older than my Comtech teacher from grade 12. Not to mention, it fell into a sinkhole. Ha what? Dude, come on. How is all of this working? Th th no way. There's no way in hell. Like, even if you say that, like, the cameras and the monitors were replaced, why would they replace the fire systems? Dude, bro, come on. Okay, this isn't a Charizard. It's not how that works. Like, my parents had a monitor like this, and it doesn't work now. And we've taken better care of it than, you know, dropping it into a sinkhole. So, yeah, yeah. The fact that all this happened is scarier than a spring lock failure, because that means that we were supposed to be there. And I don't like why we were supposed to be there. Paperwork. One of the worst things for the survivors after a springlock failure has to be the paperwork that is associated with it, because goddamn. Someone dying in your building is one thing. Someone dying in your building because of something in your building is another. And then add on to that the fact that they were your employee and probably forced into that suit without like, because of their contract, and you'll be filing reports until you have to retire. Okay, especially because one mistake on those papers means, like, even more paperwork. And I don't really know anyone who likes to do paperwork. Personally, I hate it. But that's also because my ADHD makes me, like, act, it makes it unbearable uh, for me, honestly. Like, it's even tough to write scripts sometimes, but, I mean, I eventually I have to. But, like, that, that's where my brain thrives, you know, in that stressful environment, which is not good for my health. But, if it was that kind of paperwork, um, I would honestly just quit. Because there was no way in hell that I would even want to attempt to keep my focus on that. Um, when I can just scroll through TikTok or YouTube instead. So, yeah. No thanks. But ultimately, in a number two, replaced. Oh yeah, don't forget your bones being replaced with metal ones. Yeah, like sure, there's there's surgery for people who need repairs or replacements, okay? I think like hip replacements are probably the most common actually. However, uh, those have whole processes behind them to ensure a faster recovery and you know, survival. 
not being infected. All of a sudden being shoved full of metal bones where normal ones used to be, uh, that's, that's a guaranteed infection at the very least, especially considering how, you know, your normal bones have to go somewhere else. Uh, and whether they're just crushed and then spread out inside you or just pushed out the other side, you're going to be in a hell of a lot of pain. Uh, plus, you know, probably not alive, uh, which I guess is a good thing since you won't really have to deal with the intense pain for too long, hopefully. Um, but this actually makes me think, if you replace all of your bones with metal ones, are you still you? Is this like a ship of Theseus moment? Am I about to have the, like a WandaVision finale? Or like, are we just our brain? And if we are our brain, does that mean that if we, if we have a brain transplant, do we become another person despite it still being my body? And does that mean that we're just like a brain piloting a bone mech with meat armor? Oh no, existential crisis. And finally, in a number one death. I mean, don't get me wrong, okay? But the first, the, wor the worst thing about a springlock failure has to be the whole death part, right? It, ignore my mumbling. I mean, honestly, okay, it's, it's obviously not for some of you, given the whole comments thing earlier, but the only reason you wouldn't die in a springlock suit is because you're a main character and need to be around for the story. And then you're just in agonizing pain for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah, the only people who have su survived a springlock failure, well, confirmed, is William. So, yeah, yeah, and you know, he's like the main antagonist of the game and was only able to survive since the spirit of a victim was keeping him alive. And in the books, William also ended up getting springlocked before, uh, but then got out of the suit since Dave Miller, who was revealed to be William, has scars from a previous springlock failure from before he becomes Springtrap in the books. So the only one who can ever really survive seems to be William, and he's survived it twice. Uh, anyone else is boned, uh, and personally, I'd rather not die by having millions of small metal bits. Uh, and several dozen large ones shoved into my body, uh, trying to replace my body, I would rather die peacefully in my sleep uh, with Chica's hand around my throat.